In some countries, it's really easy to travel by bike, and in other countries, not so much. What I have experienced in the south of Spain so far has led me to conclude that it's one of those countries where it's a lot harder. And I don't mean the challenging terrain. What I mean is to get around the country under reasonably humane conditions, without spending a lot of money on accommodation. But here, in the south of Spain, I have experienced either a lot of agriculture There's nothing, there's just nothing. Every square inch is utilized for agriculture or expensive tourist regions. And the little bit of open space in between was usually completely full of trash. And so over time, you get used to sleep between garbage and uh, old trash cans, old furniture, all kinds of stuff. Welcome to the dirtbag life. Don't get me wrong. I do not want to paint a negative picture of my journey so far. I am experiencing quite the opposite. I connect more with my environment and with myself. My senses are sharpening, and I am more in the moment than ever before. But with sharpened senses, you also experience more of the things that are not going so well in this world. One of those things is definitely how we treat our planet. After I have been climbing the mountain range north of Malaga, I arrived at a Mediterranean coast. It was the first time on my journey that I felt I have traveled a long distance. The last time I saw the sea was at the Atlantic Ocean, and now here I was at the Mediterranean coast. After a while, I encountered the never-ending vegetable plantations of Andalusia. As far as the eye could see, there were greenhouses. At the beginning, I was still fascinated. But after a while, I began to wonder what this massive level of agriculture was doing to the environment here. Pretty much all the rivers I saw dried up. It was a very sad sight to behold. At times, I drove through regions that seemed completely deserted. There were hardly any people and certainly no tourists. Where it was apparently no longer worthwhile or possible to grow vegetables, the greenhouses were simply left to nature. It seemed to me like a huge misdeed against our environment. I started to realize how big the level of exploitation was here and it really dragged me down from time to time. We have a problem. We as human beings, we as, as a species, have a huge problem with how we treat this planet, our only planet, the only thing that we have. Every river that you see, you look on the map, there's a lot of kind of, you see there's a lot of rivers. And then once you get there, there's nothing. It's just dry riverbeds. But instead there's a lot of, they, they have these, these huge tents where they plant their vegetables like tomatoes and salad and stuff like this. All the stuff that we, for example, buy in Germany. It's been cultivated there. And I see how much we exploit this planet. There's so much waste here. There's so much rubbish just laying around everywhere. Right now I'm, I'm in a con conservation area, but still there's so much garbage laying around, flying around, it's crazy. 
Something has to be done about this. I just don't know what. Makes me really sad. I continued my way along the Eurovelo 8, one of the big European long distance cycling routes. I hoped to find good tracks along the way. However, the Eurovelo 8 partly is in a very bad condition. It's either busy roads or very steep dirt roads that are more suitable for mountain biking. Whew, wow! All right, that's gonna be difficult. Whew. I felt that I was slowly getting in shape again and that the mountains did not bother me that much anymore. I was really starting to enjoy them. In my previous tours, I would have completely avoided cycling through these mountainous areas. I just didn't feel up to it. I um, used to travel along rivers only because, yeah, you have a very flat profile along rivers. But um, I'm really glad I changed this because uh, this view and uh, the things that go on in your head mentally when you climb these mountains and then when you can uh, descend again it's just unique. I'm developing a more stoic approach to things, which is really nice. Sometimes there's just no other way to stop right at the street, even though it's very unromantic, and cook some food. Because right now, I really need it. But as much as I enjoyed the mountains, I realized I still had much of the Mediterranean coast ahead of me. To plan too far ahead seems to take away my motivation. So once again it was time for a little change of direction. It's amazing how much a spontaneous adjustment to my plans improves my mood. I just had the feeling that I want to make some miles and I just changed the route, um, went a bit, little bit inland and here everything's pretty flat. Fortunately, I have a lot of tailwind. These bags can be, can be death if you have headwind, but if you've got tailwind, they are like sails. I just love it right now. Landscape isn't that beautiful, but right now I just feel like making some progress. And uh, yeah, that's really cool. And finally, after about 1000 kilometers of cycling, I saw the first river that actually carried water. It was such a relief and I felt how much the environmental condition affected my own well-being.
What an amazing camp spot. I've really been missing this. The last couple of hundred kilometers it was more like a fight, a struggle to find anything, a quiet place to sleep. But this is actually a very nice place. I just, uh, yesterday I decided to get, <clears throat> I decided to adjust my route again because the, the mountains on the coastline were just too, too much for me at some point. Oh, why am I doing this? So yesterday I started out at, at around 9 o'clock and at 12 or 1 I had like 20 kilometers and I was really feeling like now something has to change again. So I adjusted my route and went more inland. <clears throat> and that was just the best idea because um, I'm now heading straight to Valencia. There's one larger mountain range in between so I will have to climb about eight, nine hundred meters today and from then on it is mainly downhill and flat until Barcelona. Uh. Wait. Is this it? I think that's it. Ah, oh. whoo! Ah, yeah. I have now reached the top of the last large ascent in Spain, and I think this is a good point to wrap up this part of the journey. It has been a wild ride, seriously. I completely underestimated the mountains in Spain, but I managed it and I'm pretty proud of it. These last few kilometers, the landscape changed quite a lot. There is trees again. <laughs> I've seen quite a few things here in Spain. I've seen very beautiful landscapes, but as we saw before, I also saw quite a lot of things that were not so nice. You really cycle through a whole country and you see all the parts of this country. The good sides and the bad sides. Spain has been almost like a boot camp for me. All these mountains and the drought and the heat really kind of prepared me for what is to come in the future and for everything that I will encounter in the rest of the world. If you stayed until this point, I would like to use the opportunity to say thank you. It is amazing and overwhelming how many positive and encouraging and empowering comments you give me. I read them every evening and when I'm struggling during the day, I think about these comments and they really give me a lot of energy. So thank you very much. If you like the video, please hit like and subscribe. And if you would like to support me, there's a link in the description. Thank you so much. See you next time.